Knowledgeable viewers, welcome to part one of Ionic Life, selections from the Gnostic Nag Hammadi Library. The Nag Hammadi Library is a collection of early Christian and Gnostic manuscripts, also called codices, that were discovered in 1945 near the Egyptian town of Nag Hammadi. The writings in these ancient books date back nearly 2,000 years. Their discovery and translation have helped scholars to re-evaluate early Christian history and the nature of Gnosticism, an approach that is emphasized in these texts. Gnostics believe that a divine spark exists within each person through which a direct experience of God can be achieved. Today, the precious Nag Hammadi manuscript collection is housed in the Coptic Museum in Cairo, Egypt. Now, we invite you to join us for excerpts of Ionic Life from the Tripartite Tractate in the Nag Hammadi Library. In Gnostic terms, the Eon represents a level of divine perfection that came from God the Father and is without form. Within the creation of a physical realm, divinity can still be present but is no longer perfect. In this context, spiritual liberation involves repenting the mistakes of physical existence so that we may return to the formless divinity of the Eon. Eonic Life All those who came forth from Him who are the Eons of the Eons being emanations and offspring of His procreative nature. They too, in their procreative nature, have given glory to the Father, as He was the cause of their establishment. This is what we said previously, namely that He creates the eons as roots and springs and fathers, and that He is the one to whom they give glory. They have begotten, for he has knowledge and wisdom, and the totalities knew that it is from knowledge and wisdom that they have come forth. They would have brought forth a seeming honor. The Father is the one who is the totalities, if the eons had risen up to give honor individually. Therefore, in the song of glorification and in the power of the unity of him from whom they have come, they were drawn into a mingling and a combination and a unity with one another. They offered glory worthy of the Father from the Pleromatic Congregation, which is a single representation although many, because it was brought forth as a glory for the single one, and because they came forth toward the one who is himself the totality. Now, this was a praise, the one who brought forth the totalities, being a first fruit of the immortals and an eternal one, because, having come forth from the living eons, being perfect and full, because of the one who is perfect and full, elect full and perfect, those who have given glory in a perfect way because of the fellowship. For, like the faultless father, when he is glorified, he also hears the glory which glorifies Him, so as to make them manifest as that which He is. The cause of the second honor which accrued to them is that which was returned to them from the Father when they had known the grace by which they bore fruit with one another because of the Father. As a result, just as they were brought forth in glory for the Father, so too, in order to appear perfect, they appeared acting by giving glory. They were fathers of the third glory according to the independence and the power which was begotten with them, since each one of them individually does not exist so as to give glory in a unitary way to Him whom He loves. They are the first and the second, and thus both of them are perfect and full, for they are manifestations of the Father who is perfect and full, as well as of those who came forth, 
who are perfect by the fact that they glorify the perfect one. The fruit of the third, however, consists of honors of the will of each one of the eons and each one of the properties. The Father has power. It exists fully, perfect in the thought which is a product of agreement, since it is a product of the individuality of the eons. It is this which He loves and over which He has power, as it gives glory to the Father by means of it. For this reason, they are minds of minds, which are found to be words of words, elders of elders, degrees of degrees, which are exalted above one another. Each one of those who give glory has his place, and his exaltation, and his dwelling, and his rest, which consists of the glory which he brings forth. All those who glorify the Father have their begetting eternally. They beget in the act of assisting one another. Since the emanations are limitless and immeasurable, and since there is no envy on the part of the Father toward those who came forth from Him in regard to their begetting something equal or similar to Him, since He is the one who exists in the totalities begetting and revealing himself. Whomever he wishes, he makes into a father, of whom he in fact is father, and a god, of whom he in fact is god, and he makes them the totalities whose entirety he is. In the proper sense, all the names which are great are kept there, these names which the angels share who have come into being in the cosmos along with the Archons, rulers, although they do not have any resemblance to the eternal beings. The entire system of the eons has a love and a longing for the perfect, complete discovery of the Father, and this is their unimpeded agreement. Though the Father reveals Himself eternally, He did not wish that they should know Him, since He grants that He be conceived of in such a way as to be sought for, while keeping to Himself His unsearchable primordial being. It is He, the Father, who gave root impulses to the eons, since they are places on the path which leads toward Him as toward a school of behavior. He has extended to them faith in and prayer to Him whom they do not see, and a firm hope in Him of whom they do not conceive, and a fruitful love which looks toward that which it does not see, and an acceptable understanding of the eternal mind, and a blessing which is riches and freedom, and a wisdom of the one who desires the glory of the Father for his thought. While I'm not one to proselytize, I do think it is of the utmost importance that we all strive to move toward a vegan lifestyle. Our planet and our future are at stake. Amy Goodry, Vegan Wise viewers, it has been a pleasure to have you with us today on Words of Wisdom. 